my background, I was explaining a little bit about the importance of the, the elemental connection, you know, the four elements as they are. Um, you know, it, it can be said in different ways, but oftentimes it's put uh, by fire, water, air, and stone. Um, and how these elemental connections are really at the foundation of so many different things uh, and processes of developing deeper connection. So what I was explaining in my background, you know, there is, it's really hard to describe. I've been working with the Eight Shields for about four years, uh, pretty much full time or almost full time. And um, that in working with the Eight Shields, uh, you know, there's this term called mentor, you know, which uh, is a pretty complex term when it comes down to it. But what it's about is really providing people uh, kind of a track or means of questioning that will help them develop these deeper connections and this deeper awareness, uh, more expansive and more integral to the whole. So I've been doing that now with the H-Fields for four years, but um, my background started uh, over, well, about 27 years ago now. Um, at the time, I was a I uh, was right around the age of 15, and uh, I became uh, an apprentice to a native healer from the Oglala Sioux tribe of Lakota. These are the western band of the Sioux people who live in the, the Great Plains of South Dakota, um, who are confined onto the reservation now. But uh, at this time, this healer, he was traveling the country, and he was teaching non-natives these connective practices. But he was teaching everybody. I, sh I shouldn't just say non-native. He... There was no restriction to who who had access to this and who could experience it because it's really about life. And in a lot of ways, it's really about those four elements. And those four elements, really, they don't belong to anybody. Uh, in a way, we, we could say we belong to the elements. And so at, at uh, 14, I, or excuse me, at 15, I started this. And the, the, training, the training and the mentoring with this native healer went on for really 17 intense years. Uh, it's actually went on for now 27 years and he passed away this year in July. Um, so for 27 years, uh, I've been learning these techniques, these indigenous techniques of connection, um, whose foundation is based again upon the elements. Uh, so when people ask me nowadays, you know, what, what do I do for work? Uh, what I was explaining is that it's really hard to say, well, I'm, you know, an apprentice to a native healer and, you know, I do this transformative work, uh, bringing people into deeper connection. Um, I've kind of narrowed it down now to say that I am a, a connection design consultant and uh, that usually doesn't get the weird looks that uh, the longer explanation does. Um, you know, when I do the longer explanation, typically the conversation ends with, that's cool, um, a confused look, and then a change of subjects rapidly. So uh, when I say that I'm a, a connection design consultant, um, I think that explains it a little, a little better. And then actually it leads to a conversation which uh, is oftentimes quite transformative, you know. So... That is uh, a little bit about myself and a little bit about my background. Um, you know, some of the things to really recognize around the uh, the elements, as I, I was saying, in a, the training that was provided is that it's really about universal connections. And the reason why this is important is that, again, the elements are the foundation to the the relationship that we have with nature, okay? So... How that works and how that develops is that if you can develop your connection to the four elements, again, fire, water, air, and stone, then those are means to actually connect deeply or deeper to the rest of creation because, in a sense, all things of nature are created from those four elements. And there could be an argument now that says, well, the elements are actually, you know, the periodic table. But for myself, what I need to really connect with something isn't a concept, you know, in, in a periodic table and the atomic structure of things is really a concept to me. Um, they do, yes, they do on a microscopic level make up the elements of the, of the world around us, the structure, the matrix, but on, a, on the human being sense of perception, you know, if we just rely on our eyes and we rely on our bodies, we rely on our ears, our touch, our taste, our smell, to perceive and to connect with the world around us, then what the first foundational 
uh, components of the natural world that we can kind of relate to more on a substance level are those four original elements. We can work with fire, we can sit with stone, we breathe air our whole lives. And, you know, we have an interaction with water that our lives depend on. And we depend on all four of those things every day and really every moment of every day. So in recognizing the interconnected relationship of those four elements with our lives, um, both as individuals, you know, if we're just relating to fire or if we're re relating to water at that moment, um, air, you know, in the breath that we're taking, uh, you know, when we're really relating to those particular ele elements in the moment, then we can see that interconnectedness and we can recognize that interconnection of all stones or all air and all the things that breathe, for example, or all water, whether that's in the oceans or the cup of water that we're drinking, the air in the clouds, it's all water. So there's that matrix that each individual element pro provides, but there's also the combination of those four elements, which then provides the matrix of all the other life. And what we teach and what, I, what, um, what we do through these advanced connection practices, which I also mentioned at the beginning of this recording, um, was it, uh, we utilize certain procedures, certain techniques to tap into those matrices, you could say, those webs of connection. So at times we can recognize, let's say we need to tap into the stone and we can tap in not just to that one stone that we're holding in our hand, but we can tap into all of the stones of the earth because they're all connected. In some fashion, they're all related. And we can also recognize that stone is a part of every single being, every structure of, of uh, animal or plant utilizes the elements that are found within the stone, the stone itself, you could say, to build their structure. Um, so there, there's, you know, layer upon layer of interconnectedness. And this isn't like, uh, this isn't just about like an indigenous philosophy, you could say, or an indigenous uh, spirituality, which, which, you know, I'm heavily steeped in, but this is about a human being's relationship with the earth. It's about the human being's relationship with nature. So it transcends, you know, culture. It, it transcends even, you know, practice or technique. It transcends. It's just more about the connection. It's about building those ropes, those ropes of connection. And, you know, not everybody on this call may have heard of this concept, but the concept behind the ropes of connection is that as we develop our communication, as we develop our uh, tied to the different pieces of creation that you could view it as kind of like a, a rope that extends out of your being to another another being. So uh, an example that's often used is, you know, that bird at your front doorstep. At first, you know, you come out your door on your way to work and you, you know, don't even recognize that there is a bird, you know, because you're so occupied with your internal world, you're so occupied with what needs to happen to getting to work and driving through traffic or, you know, drinking that cup of coffee, whatever it is that the awareness isn't placed on the things around you. But once that awareness is somehow activated, um, whether that is through, you know, hearing a story such as this or, or one of many, many other stories in relationship to this event, um, or, something all of a sudden is triggered within you. So for, for the, maybe the first time in your life, you walk out that door and there's a bird at your doorstep, you know, and that little bird is suddenly recognized as an, another living being that's occupying this, this home, this place you call home and it calls home as well. And you go off to work and then this procedure happens, maybe not the next day, but the day after, you know, there's still that recognition of that bird sitting at the doorstep as you come out of the door. And this happens again and again and over and over. And the relationship to that bird suddenly becomes more intimate. And there's like a communication dynamic that's started between you and that, that bird. Okay. So this is a rope. That's what we would call a rope. And suddenly you find yourself very interested and in caring about that bird's existence, you know, and what that bird's doing and what that, that, the life of the bird, you know, recognizing that bird has a family and then seeing throughout the seasons of the spring and, and the summer that it has a spouse and that it actually now has, has children to feed 
and it has work to do and you know all the activity that it's doing suddenly you become very invested in that bird because of this rope that you have of connection so the concept of ropes isn't just applied to the animals it's not applied to the things that we can recognize as just the living sentient beings of flesh like ourselves but it can also be applied to things such as the elements and it's really a again a foundational understanding that is is instilled when you're learning about these procedures of these advanced connection practices what these advanced connection practices are you know, sometimes they're called ceremony but I really avoid that word as much as possible now until people understand what I mean by that because when we say ceremony suddenly somebody thinks of you know this really ritualistic procedure that maybe is quite disconnected from reality when in the procedures that we use the opposite is true these procedures these these uh, processes that we use are actually designed to instill a deeper sense of reality and a deeper communication with that reality and the processes that we use in these advanced connection practices the core of each one of these is the four elements any of the connection processes that we use at the core is actually connecting to the four elements sometimes individually sometimes as a whole or as a group or a combination of the four so for example we have traditions around the sacred fire and working with fire you know working with fire as a means to provide a container for a community for uh, healing for grief removal for you know sharing and community and it may just be that all that that is and all, all you know the, the container is set up just by fire alone but it may be that the fire is used in combination with um, the element of water sometimes the element of stone uh, sometimes you know the element of air which is kind of one of those those mysterious ones of how do we include air but if you look at the different connection practices that are used throughout the world you'll find that there's a commonality that there is at the core of these connection practices uh, these elemental understandings everything from martial arts to grief healing ceremonies throughout the world to uh, rites of passage they're all there um, any indigenous ceremony has some sort of connection back to the elements so you know these are just examples of why it's so important to build that relationship to the elements and why it's so so important to actually build that communication with the elements again providing that foundation to communication with all other life 